Welcome to richplanet.net, the program which aims to uncover the truth behind the alien and UFO mystery. I'm Richard D. Hall, and in this week's program, I will investigate the intriguing case of the Bristol Channel Triangle. In the last series, I made a program about huge flying triangle shaped UFOs. There was such a tremendous activity at the time that the Belgian Air Force were scrambling F-16 fighters trying to intercept them. Mm -hmm. They were occasionally picking them up on radar. Shortly after the program, I was contacted by a researcher who said that in his research he had spent a great deal of time closely scrutinizing the land in the UK using Google Earth. He said that my program about flying triangles made him wonder about an object he had picked up some time ago on Google Earth. After speaking with him, he gave me the geographical coordinates so that I could find the triangle myself. I logged onto the computer and tapped in the coordinates, and sure enough, there in front of my eyes was an arrowhead shaped object, which seemed to be too uniform in shape to be a natural structure. Now you might think that somebody must surely have walked past the object at some point to see what it is. This is not so, because the object is in fact embedded in the mud flats along the Bristol Channel coastline in an industrial area of Cardiff. The mud flats at that location are treacherous and one cannot simply walk out under them without being swallowed up by quicksand, as regularly happens in cheap 1950s B-movies. I was able to work out from the Google map that the object is situated about 650 yards from the shore and is approximately 45 feet in length, about the length of a big lorry. So this is not a small object. What could it be? Could this really be some kind of crashed spacecraft? The location where the object is embedded is usually covered by water and is only visible from the shore when the tide is out. This was all very tantalizing. Lots of thoughts went through my mind, but logged firmly in the back of my mind was the fact that it could be some kind of craft. But what kind of craft? I wasn't sure. Could it even be a UFO? I was so curious I decided to go down to South Wales to find out. I checked the tides and made sure we picked a day when the tide would be going out during that time of the visit. I telephoned a local light aircraft pilot and asked if it would be worth flying over the site. This was certainly an option, but I decided to go to the shoreline where the object was situated first to see if we could see anything from the land. We traced the location of the object using an Orden survey map and found it was directly behind a sewage treatment plant. We drove to the sewage plant and I spoke to the security guard at the gate to ask if there was public access to the sea. He told us if we drove to the other side of the sewage plant we could leave our car by the side of the road and walk round beside the outer fence to get access to the sea. Just arrived at the location where the suspected object is buried um, out on these mud flats and we're just going to walk along here now on the bit. We've just we've spoken to the security guard at the sewage works, and um, he said that there is a pathway between the fence on the edge of the sewage works. I think it's probably about a half a mile walk to the, the location where the uh, well, the, the point where we may be able to view the location of the object, but. We've just been able to detect that this is in fact a sewage treatment plant on account of the aroma which is filling the air here. Um, I'm just walking along a little narrow track. This is fairly an accessible sort of place. There is a little bit of a footpath here and the security guard did tell us that uh, there are occasionally gypsies come along here. So I think there's another, there's a point where they gather we're just on the north side of the Bristol Channel here. Now 
Now the object that we're interested in is 650 yards out onto the mudflats and it looks to me like the tide's not actually that far out so we're going to go around to the point now where we believe the object to be because it's it's a fair bit further around this corner. Okay, we, we, we've, met, we've met a fence here, so I guess this is telling us we shouldn't go... Oh no, the path goes round it. Just need to be a bit careful here. Sort of a, a little bit of a 20 odd foot drop down there. Just, yeah, we're okay. Maybe if we could get winched up in this crane, we'd be able to see it. We're just coming around this corner now and you can see in the distance there there's two uh, jetties going out into the sea which we'll try and pick up on Google Earth. This building that we're approaching now is actually the building which is overlooking the sea which is closest to the object, probably 700 yards away from it. You can just see it. I'll just come into view now when we come around this corner. And I'm breathing like this because I'm carrying a very heavy tripod. See there's some, uh, there's a platform up there. That's pretty high. Another platform there, look. It's not obvious on Google Earth that this is a, a very high building. It's, it's got some things on top of it and it, you know, it's a bit deceptive. That would be, that would be the place to film, just on that platform there or even on the roof. So, but the tide doesn't appear to be as far out as I thought it would be. Okay, now we've, we're going to use the edge of these sewage um, treatment tanks to line up where the object is. Because if you look at Google Earth, the, I don't know if you can see that just lining up there. It's the last set of tanks. So, that, so there we go. We're just, we're in line with those sewage tanks there. The edge of this, we're now, we're in line with it. So I'm going to line the camera up in line with that, looking out of the sea. And the object is slightly to one side of that. So it will be slightly to the, the left as we look at it, I think. Uh, let's have a look. Just panning around, without a doubt, the best vantage point is going to be at the top of that building there. Possibly even on it when the tide's fully out. But unfortunately it's Saturday and all the managers have gone home and the next time we're going to have a chance to speak to them is Monday. So I'm going to turn around 180 degrees and I'm in line there. Okay. Right, we've just come up with a brainwave which is um, the squiggly lines on the actual contours of the flats and we, we, we can see uh, where the object is in relation to them. So if you look there, there are, I think we could maybe go down and stand at the, at the, where the mud flats start and see if I can view it from there and get a closer image. So we're looking for a triangular object, which is pointing to, well, not quite towards us, but almost towards us. <coughs> I think it's that far over. I think it's in in somewhere in where those two lines meet. We're looking at it obviously on a much more acute angle so the lines appear far more squashed together and therefore the object will as well so we're looking for more of a well a very flat looking triangle. What's the sand like? Is it really soft? There she is. She's going to disappear any minute from view. <laughs> there she is. Can you see anything? 
said no. Bollocks. Kerry's found an oxygen bottle. We've come down to the uh, to where the mud flats start and found this bottle. A diver's bottle. Well actually no, it's too big to be a diver's bottle. It's the inoxyacetylene bottle. Wait, if you keep walking it's, it'll be directly in front of you in a minute. Keep 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 going. Keep going. Right, stop. Right, look straight ahead. But she's standing there, look, there's the two lines. There. I've just climbed down this embankment and I nearly shit my pants because I just stood on this object here which is looks like a it looks like a mine. Definitely looks like a mine. It's rather bobble as are because we came down here to look for a UFO and we found a World War II mine. There's loads of them. There's another one there. Having travelled down to South Wales and located the coastline where this strange 45 foot long triangular object was placed, we eventually found the spot on the shore nearest the object. She's going to walk out along here and see if we can see it. Like from along there. There's a plane overhead. There is an object sticking out over there, but that's nowhere near where we suspect the thing to be. Just a rock. There's Kerry. Can you see anything? What? Kerry! said not really no I'll just swing the camera around round to that uh, vantage point before zoom out there we go if we could get up there with a high power lens and we can see where I was standing before Just standing on top of that green bit there. really tempting to just try and walk out onto this but <laughs> ah, hello Kerry yes okay the only thing that I can see is where I stand over to my left where I'm pointing now yeah. um, on that slightly elevated um, area uh, is there's a triangular shape bit of light in the water that I can see, but it just looks like it's a skin of water. I can't really see what it is. Right. And this mud flat, mud, right. mud flats. <laughs> Okay, well, so, okay. yeah, uh, so we'll go to this ledge here. Right. Bye bye. Oh. I've now moved over to where we saw Kerry before, and 
that's the um, the building with the vantage point and you can see the top of the shrubbery there where I was standing at first and then I was standing over there now okay so let's just see what we can see not much where do you think it is so I'm just counting the lines right because there's about between five and six lines one two three four so these two lines here could be anything can't even see a triangle it's too we're on too much of a narrow angle to, to see a triangle well we'll go back and film from where I was before um, but really definitely the best the best vantage point without doubt will be on top of that building but right, we'll go back on the um, we'll go back onto this onto the shrubs over here I'm back up on the um, the grass verge now and we've been here about an hour and a half and it's the sun's coming out and the tide's gone out quite a bit further Zoom in there. I'll do a little pan across and just see if I can see anything. Something over there, Riz. I think there's a bird standing on it. Just looks like a bunch of stones, though. Now there is something there. That's as far as I can zoom in. Now I think that's it. That must be it. That must be our object, and that's all we can see of it. I think. Okay. And. With, with the naked eye, I have to say, it just looks like a collection of rocks. So we think we've located the object and it's, it's bang in the middle of the screen there and that's as good as image we can get of it and with, without actually going on top of that building. So, and I'll just try and verify that that is the object by panning out and showing that that, that object there is approximately level with the fourth block. So if we've got the jetty, which is one, then there's a, sec there's a second block of rocks there, then there's a third block there, and there's a smaller fourth block there where the birds are sitting. It's approximately in line with that fourth splodge. If we pan across, um, there we go. So we think that's the triangular object seen on Google Earth. And Looking at this screen here and with a naked eye, it looks like a collection of rocks to me. Um, and we're looking at it at a very oblique angle, so we can't really tell. But So there's our suspected object, and I have to say, it does just look like a very dense group of rocks. Which is, it is strange how they managed to make that formation, but I think that is the object. It lines up exactly with the... Um, with the side of the sewerage tanks um, and if I just zoom back a little bit there are other groups of rocks which we can compare it with which are a little bit closer here we go here's a group so we can see it does look similar I think it's just rocks Kerry oh well should we go and have a look at the, from the top of that hill just to confirm it? Do you think we'll see better from the top of that other hill? Kerry said no. I've just climbed to the top of this hill to get a different vantage point and I can clearly see the object 
from up here but I'm just going to pan around the landscape first see down below there the water treatment plant and across into Cardiff that's Cardiff city centre over there zoom in zoom out this is where all the shit from Cardiff is processed. We can clearly see it there now. This is a better vantage point in the middle of the screen. And again, it just looks like a block of stones to me. But strange how a block of stones can form in that shape. But there we are. And I'm just going to pan back now. Onto the seven. There's Kerry saying, I'm pissed off, I want to go home, I want me tea. So we're going to go home. We came here with the expectation of finding something quite Bob Lazar, but instead we found a bunch of rocks. This is Richard D. Hall, richplanet.net, smelling of sewage. You can't win them all. But like I said in the film, if we hadn't gone there, we wouldn't have found out. And curiosity would probably have driven me mad by now.